Hi, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Today I'm doing something super exciting. Um, I've created a new book tag um, and it's called The Bohemian Rhapsody Book Tag because I have been obsessed with Queen for the last month and a half since I went to see Bohemian Rhapsody. I've seen it three times, I've bought a bunch of their albums, and I just think so many of their songs tell such amazing stories. To, you know, each um, band member who wrote them, um, the different points they were in their lives when they did it and I just think it's such an amazing collection of work and I thought it would be really fun to make a tag surrounding some of their top songs. Um, I do just want to make a side note for this. There is someone else who created a queen book tag and I'm going to link it down below um, because you know somebody already did this so um, I'm changing it to the Bohemian Rhapsody book tag um, because I didn't quite like the questions that he asked, they weren't what I wanted to ask, um, but I definitely wanted to credit him and not just say that I'm the first person who ever came up with this, um, but this is my unique spin on it. So this is the Bohemian Rhapsody book tag. Um, number one, keep yourself alive. Name a dystopian book where your characters are just trying to get by. I don't think there's any more popular or more true to this statement than um, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Um, this is the beautiful 10th anniversary edition of the book. Um, I'm going to be rereading this series this year, um, but I definitely remember what I remember, and I know that things are pretty dark in District 12, and I feel like a lot of novels that came after it, they tend to remind me of it, even if they were written beforehand or whatever. This was my first true introduction to a dystopian place um, where things have gone really badly, and so I'll always think of The Hunger Games for this. Number two love of my life um, freddie's touching song to um, the love of his life mary um, and i said name a book with a bittersweet love story because the lyrics of this song are um, his true love has left him and he's begging them to come back to him um, and so for me that just really inspired what's something that was a bittersweet love story to me um, and for that um, i don't have a copy of this book anymore i don't think um, but that would be The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Um, even though it's not a book that I really want to read again, and I know it's been kind of done to death, at the time, it was the most like crushing thing I'd ever read. And <laughs> so, yeah, for me, that really hits the thing of a bittersweet love story. Um, two teens with cancer, you know, just hits you in the heart. Number three, The Seven Seas of Rye, which, um, so for this one, it's Name Your Favorite Fantasy World. Um, I just love this song, and it, The Seven Seas of Rye, the, the place of rye was actually something Freddie and his sister came up with, and it was their, like, fantasy world that they would play make-believe in as kids. And actually, four different songs written by Freddie all take place in rye, which I think is so cool that, like, as a musician, he had a fantasy world and he would make songs about it. Because most fantasy places are very dangerous. <laughs> I decided to pick one that is the most like here, but has some extra to it. And so I picked The World of Renegades by Marissa Meyer. And this is kind of a fantasy world. It's a little more science fiction, but it's in a world where people have superhero superpowers. And I just think it would be really cool to get a superpower. Um, hopefully it wouldn't just be the one where someone can like <laughs> sneeze powerfully. I don't know. That would be me, right? It would be something like that. But I just really love this world. This is a great book series. And I thought this would be a cool world to live in with the least stress level of some of the fantasy worlds that I enjoy. Number four, We Are the Champions. Oh, that amazing, that song that it just pumps you up so much. For this um, song, I picked Name a Book hero or heroine who has had to overcome many challenges. I picked my good old buddy Aragon from the Inheritance series. Um, I'm also rereading this series this year. Um, let me know if you would be interested in doing it with me. Um, I think I'm going to start in March or April. Not quite sure yet. Um, but I think Aragon is going up against some steep odds and he just, you know, learns all about this and he's expected to become the most powerful dragon rider they've ever seen to take on the evil king Galbatorix. And how's he going to do that? You know, and I think him and Safira overcome a lot together. Their friendship is amazing. And I think Aragon just, he really shows up. I think that's the best way to say it. 
We will rock you. Number five, name a hero or heroine who grows up a lot. So if you listen to the words of we will rock you, it shows the three phases of um, aging or like male ego, I guess is kind of how I've heard it explained by some band members. Um, it's first a little boy and then, you know, or it's a little boy and then a young man and then an old man. Um, um, I picked something a little interesting. I picked Feyre from A Court of Thorns and Roses, um, most specifically in the second and third book. Um, I think Feyre thought her life was going to be the same day to day. She was going to keep taking care of her family, hoping to get by day to day and keep going until she died from it. And she is actually destined to be so much more than that. And I think that she really takes advantage of it and comes into her own. And I love her. I love that she takes control in different ways. Some people may say she's really passive and just gets thrown from thing to thing, but let's not forget who saves whom in this book. Let's not forget. Number six, I want to break free. Name a hero or heroine who breaks the mold. This was a really easy choice for me because I have a new favorite heroine and her name is Leah. And I don't have the first book because my sister has it right now. Um, I hope you started reading that, Beth, because Leah is my favorite. I think Leah always knew what her destiny was going to be. She was going to get married off in a political marriage and make that person a good wife and be a mother to his children. And Leah says no. And so the beginning of... Um, her story, um, Kiss of Deception, she's actually running away from her life to become a serving wench in a tavern. And if that isn't as far away from the princess life she was supposed to lead, I don't know what. I feel like in most fantasy stories, someone like Leah would go from being a tavern wench to a queen, and instead she goes from being a princess to a tavern wench. And I think she's amazing. She is so smart, she thinks things through, and she wants what's best for her people at the end of the day. And I love it, I won't stop raving about her. You can't make me, so you should just read it and get on the train too. <laughs> Number seven, Bohemian Rhapsody. Name a book or a series that just went on and on and on, and just, you want it to keep going on and on, but it just never seems to end because it's so long. For me, that was easy because the longest book series I've ever read, and in fact, I'm still reading because I haven't finished the last three books, is the Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind. This is the sixth book in the series. It's my favorite book in the series, so it's the one I always show. And I have a first edition that I found for $5 at a thrift store. It's amazing. Um, this is the epic journey of Richard Rawl um, as he tries to save his kingdom from an evil emperor who wants to take over the world. So he's pretty much the best and this series is amazing. Richard and Caitlin have one of my favorite love stories. I always forget about it because I read it quite a few years ago, but I also love it for that. So this is my epic series that I read. Number eight killer queen name a villain that every time you see them it just makes you want to go yes queen um whether they're evil or fantastic whatever you deem the best response to this i picked none other than the most delicious of evil queens herself lavana the lunar queen i think she is evil <laughs> but also tortured in that way where you think they can be redeemed, but you're not sure, but they're really evil, but you still are rooting for them. And that's Lavana to me. She was one of the first times that I actually really liked a villain because usually I'm like, no, I don't care. But when we would have things from her perspective, I actually was interested in what she was doing. I still think she was crazy, but I was interested. So Lavana is my killer queen. Radio Gaga. I just want to do it right now. Um, name a book or a series that is a little redundant, but you are still on the train for and you will keep buying those books even though you've seen it a hundred times. So for me, that author slash type of book would be Julia Quinn and you know the type of book it would be historical romance. These are basically all the same when you're talking about like Avon books or Harlequin books, you know, girl meets guy, there's something in their way, but they get together in the end and everything's happy. And sometimes I just need that in my life and I don't care that I know how it's gonna end up every single time. I will always buy the next Julia Quinn book I will always buy the next Eloisa James book and I will read them and they will be exactly what I'm getting in for. I know what's happening. I know where it's going to go and I'm still going to buy it and love it. And there we go. So this is my Radio Kaga. And number 10, 
somebody to love. Tell me a hero or a heroine who's done everything. I pick Tobias from The Savior's Champion. Um, granted, this starts as Tobias is trying to do anything he can for his family, but quickly he meets the love of his life and he realizes there's going to be sacrifices that need to be made, sometimes literally, yeah, that's blood, um, for him to be able to save his love. And I enjoy that because I like that it's two-pronged. Like, he isn't just doing this for the love of his life, but it's a, you know, pretty big part of it. And I think it's fantastic. I can't wait for the next book. Jenna Moresi, I love you. Please write me more. I want it now. This is also self-published, in case you haven't heard that before. And she does beautiful work. It's fabulous. And then finally, the show must go on. Tag three friends. So I want to tag Bethany at um, beautifully... Uh, Beautiful bookish Bethany. Sorry, forgot the name, but I know who I'm thinking of. I want to tag Amanda at the Naughty Librarian. And I want to tag my friend Becca because that's what I do for you, Becca. I'm going to keep tagging you and everything because I love you and you're awesome. So you wonderful ladies, please check out this video. I hope you enjoy this tag. I hope you love Queen as much as I do. And I hope that this made you want to go listen to one of their CDs. I would have put music in, but you know, your girl, she has a little channel and you just will have to go listen to the songs yourself. It'll be great. Thank you so much for joining me for this book tag. Again, I'm Jen at The Book Refuge and I make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I look forward to talking to you on any of the social media platforms and I'll see you in another video. Bye!